Okay. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're all having a fine Saturday. I need to do some updates at the beginning of this video, and then we're going to get into the playthrough with Lantern. So, first of all, um, Electrode vs. Magneton, or Electrode vs. Magneton, was supposed to be the release for today, but unfortunately, it's going to be delayed until next Saturday. The uh, consequence of this is that I tried to get a bonus video ready for today to fill its place, but that isn't ready either, so um, it's going to come out either Monday or Tuesday. Apologies for the delays. Um, I think you will realize why Electrode vs. Magneton has been delayed so much when it finally does come out. For now, um, yeah, let's just play some Generation 2. There's going to be a stream today for Lantern and then another stream on Thursday for Yanma. Okay, Lantern, let's talk about this Pokemon. Uh, it's, it, it, its design is amazing, its typing is extremely cool, but its base stats are not great. 125 HP, 58 attack and defense, 76 special attack and special defense, and 67 speed. It has a slow growth rate, which of course is the worst of all of the growth rates. And for a move pool, it does not start with particularly good options. Bubble, Thunder Wave, and Supersonic. Through level up, it gets Flail, which can be useful, Water Gun, which is a good upgrade for Bubble, and finally Spark at level 25, which is essentially its best electric type move until it gets Thunderbolt by the Move Tutor, which is after I defeat Lance. He is not available until you have entered the fall until you have entered the Hall of Fame. Um, I see that some people were also fig trying to figure out what hidden power typing I would be running today. Hidden power ice. Um, we need a solution for Lance's Pokemon. Believe me, return is not going to be it. So we are, uh, yeah, we're going to use hidden power ice. Flareon really should not be in the thumbnail because I did change it. So uh, if Flareon's in the thumbnail, maybe refresh your page or something like that. Um, yeah, on my end, it shows Lantern. So something's going on on your end. Um, also, uh, my wife is a drummer, so you may hear some very, um, you might hear some very, very faint drums at some point, uh, if you do, uh, even right now, uh, apologies. Again, I wasn't intending to stream today, so, yeah, um, also, I'm redoing this one. I did it before where I started as, uh, Chin Chow, I guess it is, and then evolved throughout the playthrough into a lantern. Yeah, um, kind of weird, uh, kind of weird that the thumbnail is not showing up correctly. Anyways, it's, it should be fine. Um, so Lantern today, uh, I was not particularly impressed with it, with it when I played it last time, largely because, uh, Chin Chow was not very good at the beginning of the game, especially when it starts with Bubble. So I'm hoping that today that's going to improve its results. Uh, this is my tier list in Generation 2 up until now. We have uh, Granville and Clefable, which are most recent additions to this tier list, taking the top two spots overall. I think Ursaring and Feraligator, maybe Lugia, will will give them a run for their money at some point. ho -Oh is also going to get a major upgrade when I redo it. And I think Celebi can get slightly better results. Um, overall, Gen 2 is the weirdest for ranking Pokemon because there aren't as many tools in this game for each individual Pokemon to uh, differentiate itself from the pack. So the most important thing is generally move pool. And unfortunately for Lantern, we don't have much there. Okay, so yeah, we're going to get into it now. Let's do this. Uh, I'll do one playthrough, then we'll do a little bit of optimization. After the optimization, we will come back and do a second playthrough, hopefully getting better results, and then we'll rank Lantern at the very end of the video. Note, there have been some changes to my overlay software in the time between the last crystal stream and this one. You'll notice those on the right-hand side of the screen. Also, there might be some errors over there. If there are errors, please call them out. I will try to pause the game and fix the code on the fly so that going forward we won't have any more problems uh, like that. Okay, let's do this.
That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> I was not supposed to go back there. Hopefully everything is set up correctly. Okay, here we go. S tier for sure. In terms of design, yes, but in terms of performance, I, I don't think so. Everyone thinks water water is going to be a really good typing, but water is not actually a particularly good typing for a solo run. Uh, I'm curious, can anyone hear drums? Or are the drums uh, effectively being cut out by my microphone? Also, Lantern Sprite is great. Front Sprite is uh, 10 out of 10. We're going to call it football because it's based off of a football fish. Anyone who tells me it's based on an angler fish, you are right, but the angler fish is a subcategory of the football fish. So it is based on a football fish, and today I'm gonna to be calling it football. Also, there will be no encounters on early routes to better make both production and ranking uh, more fair and take less time. I want to hear drums and metal scream. Actually, the metal scream that I did at the end there, it, it messed my voice up a little bit, which is another reason that Electrode vs. Magneton could not be finished. I, I couldn't record enough voiceover for it. Yeah, I, I think YouTube is messed up in, in terms of what it's displaying. Um, okay, so we can see the... Uh, okay, I already noticed an error on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to pause. We're going to see if the, okay, the pause did work. We're going to do some quick, um, can you see the drop shadow? Okay, this is how detail oriented I am about the little things in the video and why sometimes it takes a very long time for me to implement new features. So if you look on the right hand side of the screen, you can see the stats over there. Um, I've changed how the stats are displaying so that there are now uh, explicit labels so that people who are colorblind will be more easily able to determine which stat I'm referring to on the enemy's team. Um, they're also the, the same abbreviations that I use for my Pokemon, the same colors that I use for my Pokemon, and in the same order that I use them uh, for my Pokemon. So. Yeah, but you can see now that the graphic that is showing up there has two drop shadows applied to it, so the drop shadow is really ugly underneath it. <laughs> we need to fix that. Um, so yeah, give me a second. I guess I can... Can I move this over here? Will you see it? No, you won't. Okay, good. I gotta figure out first why the drop shadow is being applied and then remove it. So, one second. I think I already know why, because this happened in Generation 1 as well when I made this update. Uh, what? Enemy Pokemon Faint. That's the function I'm looking for. We'll find the function, and then we will fix it. fix I think nope should be good okay we're gonna refresh and see if it fixed it it did not fix it we still have multiple drop shadows okay uh yeah that's right Oh, I see. My my fault. My fault. It's a really simple thing, and I was being silly. Okay, you see, now there's no drop shadow. You see, it looks better like this. It's cleaner, but all the elements are still defined well. Um, yeah, so we took away the drop shadow, the extra drop shadow. Now we're ready to go again. There'll probably be more small fixes like that as we go. Uh, 
Did I confuse it? I don't remember. Yeah, it's confused. Okay. It's going to knock itself out a lot faster than I can knock it out with Bubble, because Bubble's not very good. I know Supersonic has trash accuracy, but, like, what else am I going to do? I have a berry, too, just in case this gets really bad. There's the berry. There we go. Got it. Yeah, I don't know why YouTube isn't updating the thumbnail. It's really weird. Um, I updated it. It is correct on my end, just so everyone knows. Okay, um, and just in case people have joined, um, Electrode vs. Magneton is... Electrode vs. Magneton is delayed. It'll be out next weekend. You'll understand why. And also, there'll be another stream uh, next uh, this Thursday for Yanma and Crystal. Yeah, no encounters is nice, yeah. There, there, like, a lot of people ask me the questions about... Okay, I noticed another issue, which you'll see at the beginning of the next battle. The effective power for the enemy's Pokémon shows up a little bit late. It shows up once my Pokémon enters the battle, so check this out. Now it's going to pop up now. See? Late. So we're going to fix that right after this battle. I know why that's happening, too. I'm tracking the state of the game with a function which watches a bunch of other properties. Um, and that function, it returns five different results. To battle, battle, from battle, overworld, and no Pokemon. Um, that function right now is just, uh, it's only showing the effective power in the battle and the uh, from battle state. It is failing to show it during the to battle state. And there, there are two potential reasons for this. Okay, number one, I'm not doing state management correctly here, so it's just not even passing that check, but it, it, there may be another reason that I have done this where it's going to have error data slip through. So I'm going to see if we have the potential for error data to slip through. No, we don't. Okay, so we should be good. Fix that. Okay. Oops. We're going to fight pretty much everyone because Lantern's not very good. And I'm going to have to face the Bayleaf in Azalea Town, and the Bayleaf is terrifying. So we need to level up uh, a good amount in order to make that a uh, possible victory. Uh, no, it's not that they don't have the effective power. Like, they do, because they, they know that... Like, my software knows that... Um, my software knows that... Uh, I'm using Lantern, and it knows the level and all that stuff, so it, it can easily calculate their effective power based on my solo Pokemon. That's not a problem. The, it was a, just a state problem. I just not checking for the correct states. I was only checking for battle and from battle. Two battle handles everything until I send my Pokemon out into the initial battle. The reason I have to have the two battle state is because garbage data slips through if you just, uh, when the battle starts, immediately change over and start watching the, uh, start watching the battle ram, because the battle ram is cleared and filled with a bunch of tile data during, uh, during overworld sequences of the game. Why does Lantern have the slow growth rate? I don't know, I wish I had an answer for you there. This is a frustrating one to me. It's like, they, they, in Gen 2, it really feels like every single new interesting Pokemon that they introduced, they were like, we are going to give this thing something that makes you want to not use it. For Lantern, it's the slow growth rate. All right, so we got uh, an unfortunate situation now. Um, because we're like level eight with the slow growth rate before Faulkner, but I don't think we can beat Faulkner at level eight. Why is... what? What is happening? My B button isn't working. One second. Why is my B button not working? It should be working. <laughs> okay, well, we'll find out. Here we go. Uh, 
Well, that's activating select for some reason. I'll have to fix that after. Okay, Faulkner. Uh, okay, so bubble right away is not probably going to work because mud slap is just going to get me. Yeah, yeah, this is a loss. <laughs> there is no way we're going to win now. All right, I think I need to train, but like... Why did my... Ah, oh, everything reset? What? Why did the timer restart? Why did the timer restart? What? Um... Okay, apparently we're in like tech problems mode, but I have learned my lesson since the beginning of the year, so check this out. We are just going to revert to the old version of the software because I need to have... Why? Wait... Is B not working, really? Wait, we gotta test this. It seems to be working there. But it's not working here. I don't get that. What's going on? This was working. Why is B not working? Okay. What? Um. Uh. It's correct in my... It's correct in my mapping software for my controller, and it is correct within my emulator. But it is not working. The emulator is, I think, reading it incorrectly? Like, that has to be it. Yeah, other software is reading it correctly, so the emulator is wrong. Yeah, we're going to have to restart. The timer is, is, is gone. There is no way to recover it. The timer, yeah, so the timer will be just like, there's nothing we can do there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the emulator off and turn the emulator back on because this shouldn't be happening. Gonna con I'm going to clear all of these inputs because I think it might be getting confused and thinking I'm using a controller, but I'm not. Yeah, that's what it was doing. It's, so it's a conflict between um, the controller and the emulator. It's uh, my controller setup and then my keyboard setup are having conflicts with each other. So like the button on the controller is doing one thing, but the button on the keyboard is doing a different thing because my controller is mapped to a keyboard function, but I'm pretty sure the overlay bypasses that and just reads it as a controller anyway. Um, okay. It's fixed now though. Ta-da! Okay. Okay, let's do this. Ah, little bumpy start, but I don't know if it would be one of my streams if it didn't have a bumpy start. No. Yes, the default name it assigns me is Scott. Oh, 
and now my directions are not working. Ah, pain. What? Wow, like everything broke. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is great. Perfect content. I hope you're all glad I streamed. Okay, okay, I think we solved it. Yeah, this is definitely the work of Team Rocket is the only explanation. The way that the the game like uh, gates input there when you're choosing your name is a little bit weird. Like it always feels like I can push down like one or two frames before I actually can. And then when I press down, it always messes me up because I don't and then I go into the menu to like assign my name. This is the content I subscribed for, good. <laughs> good, we're calling it football again. Football. You weren't here earlier and you didn't hear my explanation. It's an anglerfish, and it's also a football fish. Look at it, lantern looks like a football. Also, I'm I'm playing at night today because some people said they like the night aesthetic more, and I was like, yeah, the night aesthetic is kind of calming. So let's just play at night for once. There's no like gameplay reason why playing at night is uh, is the correct choice. Everyone on YouTube. Please just refresh. <laughs> the thumbnail is correct on my end. We are all asking the same question as to why the thumbnail is Flareon. No one has the answer except YouTube. Okay, hopefully we get better luck here with uh, confusion against the Chikorita. And I might need to keep Supersonic for the Bayleaf and Azalea Town. Oops. I might need to uh, keep it for the Bayleaf and Azalea Town. Come on. This move is so bad. I hate using this move. <laughs> it's like, with sleep, at least the Pokemon can't attack you. Even if it's really inaccurate, like Hypnosis. It's like, I'll like chance a Hypnosis on a really terrifying opponent just to put them to sleep to get by for free if I have to. But... Supersonic is a totally different story. You like chance it and then it still hits and then or like chance it it doesn't hit or chance it it hits then they don't hit themselves. Like, ugh. Frustrating. I guess there's the upside of they can do damage to themselves, which is good, but Yeah, Psyduck and Curse, yep. Yeah. I just, like, the reason I honestly didn't use Knight is like, I didn't like the aesthetic of the footage. Like, I, I think for a video, it objectively looks worse, but that's just my, like, it's a, again, it's my opinion. Like, I said it objectively looks worse, but, like, subjectively to me, building a video with all Knight footage seems not nice. Scott overuses sleep, or at least used to. I think so. I think also people are maybe used to playing different formats, so their perception of me using sleep is that I overuse sleep. But like in a format like a Nuzlocke or something like that, uh, sleep is not nearly as good because switching out is is an option. But with sleep, if you put together a like a terrifying foe, like let's say you're a ground rock type, and you can put to sleep Gyarados. Like obviously this is hypothetical; that would never happen. But if if that's the case, and you just put it to sleep, then you can get by the Gyarados without taking any damage, which is fundamentally different than fighting it, going down to red health, and then having to beat like three or four other Pokemon on low health. So the ability to bypass a target without losing any HP is a really critical component to uh, solo running. The only way to get around that is to have the ability to recover health later in the battle. And so a move like Rest uh, will will allow that. So then you don't have to be so worried about losing health early on because you know later you can just gain the health back if you really have to. Yeah, 
Yeah, hypnosis is twice as good. Yeah, it does feel like that. I don't know if that's how the, like, math really does work out, but yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm mean, gonna become a meme. I should just, like, put a flare gun somewhere in the video now with a YouTube icon on it. It's YouTube. I updated the thumbnail. I did it last night before I even started this stream. I uploaded the lantern thumbnail last night. <sighs> um, we're not going to be able to do this. Uh, I think... Uh, see, like, I have bubbles. Like, fighting the Bellsprout in Sprout Tower doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, are there Geodude in here that I can fight? Oh, this is... Like, no good. Yeah, okay, there are. This is like the first time I've trained in here. <laughs> YouTube needs three days in advance, apparently. I don't know. Sometimes, uh, sometimes YouTube just decides, like, when you upload something that it doesn't want to actually upload it. I, I used to, when I was first doing this, I, it would take me like seven days to make one video. Um, and... I would be rushing to finish it on Saturday right before my release time. And I would like upload it and then YouTube would just be like, hey, actually we're just gonna check this video forever. And we're gonna sit here for like 10 minutes telling you we're checking the video. And then at some point you're gonna realize we're not actually checking the video. And it's just gonna hang for like infinite amount of time on the checking screen. You're gonna just have to delete it and upload a new copy. That was fun. They patched that, by the way, so it's not an issue anymore. <laughs> Just take a picture of the Pokedex and put it as the thumbnail? Yeah. That should be the profile picture that I have. I'm gonna beat every game with every Pokemon. That's my goal. For a long time, I didn't say that, but that's now my goal. My goal is beating every game with every Pokemon. Obviously there's some that can't do it, so I will fail sometimes. The feeling when, uh, on YouTube, it's a really interesting phenomenon that you, that I had never experienced before. Like, when you're doing work with, like, a team or something, or you're at school, there's, like, one to, like, five people maybe giving you feedback whenever you do something. On YouTube, when something happens, you get feedback from thousands of people, and it's instantaneous, and... Not a lot of people go back and look at all the other comments or all the chat messages or something like that to go, hey, was my question asked? They're like, no, 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 I have a question. Obviously my thing is so important, so I'm gonna just post it. And then you get like 30 messages all at once that are just like, hey, like why did you use like, I don't know, like supersonic against that the Dragonite? Like you really shouldn't have like, yeah, okay, I, I know. <laughs> like, I was probably thinking about it when I was making the video. Okay, so we can beat the Pidgey now. I think I'm gonna Thunder Wave the Pidgeotto and then not supersonic because my accuracy is lowered, but just hopefully the paralysis will make it miss enough turns that I can actually hit once here. Oh gosh, Lantern, you're letting me down. This is brutal. Oh. Uh, okay, so we're gonna try Sprout Tower. Uh, yeah, we're gonna try Sprout Tower. I'm gonna take this block out There is another berry I can go back to get. But I did defeat the Pidgey, so I got some experience. Oh, no! Four hits on the level three Bell Sprouts. Wait. I wonder if I could blackout train on these. Does that make sense? To blackout train on these and gain as much experience as possible? Anyways, the point I was supposed to make about, like, everyone, like, commenting the same thing is that, like, 
I don't know, but it, it for me at least, it gets real frustrating when you read the same comment like a hundred times and you're like, yeah, I know, but like, it hurts hearing it this many times. Blackout train on the level 7 bell sprouts, but there's no extra Pokemon on their team, so you don't knock anything out before knocking them out, right? Well, I guess there's the one person who has the Hoot Hoot. Yeah, Elder 2? That's a possibility. Ah. Just save just in case, you never know. I might lose to the level 7 bell sprouts. We'll see. We're gonna get up there and check. This is the pain of the slow growth rate. How did I do this with Chinchou? Does it get Thundershock at the start? I bet it gets Thundershock, and I bet Lantern misses it. Uh huh. Gosh, so close. Uh, going back and knocking out more Geodudes, I think you underestimate truly how little experience um, wild Pokemon give in Johto. The Geodudes are like level 3 and 2. They're brutally low. I do think this will be faster. Yeah, self-destructs, like, you can use self-destruct for Black Oat training. I was considering that uh, the other day with Electrode. I don't know if I'm going to end up talking about it in the video because the video is <laughs> the video is already very long. And there's a reason it's not coming out today. Oh my gosh, more Flareon comments. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it's brutal. <sighs> ah. Oh my gosh. Naturally, you must be from United Kingdom. That's the only the only answer. Oh, look at this! Level 6? It's getting me! Uh... So, remember, wild Pokemon give one times the experience yield that the Pokemon species provides. The species has an experience yield, and then the Pokemon's level determines the amount of experience. Okay, so we can just defeat that. The Hoot Hoot? Is, I'm gonna get let it knock me out. Apparently, it's not allowed to knock me out. Go. I have no money left. That's okay. Money is not super important. Again. Hey, A, B, C, D. Hey, Scott, you're in your early 30s, right? How's your hairline holding up? Um, uh, my hairline looks like it is, like, when I was born, I had hair, and it looked like I had a receding hairline. <laughs> like, I've never had a chance. But granted, uh, my, all my grandparents and my dad, they, they, they all had full heads of hair. No one went bald, so I'm definitely not going bald, but, uh, I'm not losing any hair. It's just, like, the starting point of the hair was already... Uh, I was behind already, so there was no hope. My dad's hair did go gray, though, when he was quite young. Uh, so my my beard is going gray. Yes, please! Ah, oh, yeah! Okay, we can black out here, too. Sweet. Blackouts are being counted as a separate metric, by the way. No. Hate you, Ghastly. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? Okay, I got the Paralyzed Heal. We're okay. There's full heal before the next time I can get paralyzed. It'll be fine. I 
I, I've been like, like since I was like 19 or 18, I'm like, when I get gray, it's going to be awesome. I like, can't wait for it. So like, I'm really excited. It's like slowly, it's slowly coming. Yes. Flail, flail, the best move ever in this playthrough. Base 40 power flail feels amazing. Okay. Oh. Uh, why not? Um, why not black out against Faulkner? Because if I black out against Fal, I can lose against Faulkner. This is more consistent. I'm not going to lose against the Bell Sprouts. Whereas, like, if you black out to the Pidgey, then you just waste time entirely. So that's why not Faulkner, because it can mud slap me, and then and then just bad stuff happens. All right. I might want to go to low health and then do this. Let's see what level 13 brings, but... Okay, that's not bad. One is not bad, and then we can Thunder Wave. Well, we should be able to Thunder Wave. And then I'll bubble for a little bit until I start Flail's power starts building. There we go, 40. Can we get a little bit more Flail power, please? Little bit more? Oh, we're gonna beat it with bubble, okay. We win, brutal start to the game. Almost 16 minutes. Ugh. Yeah, the Pidgey's experience is also bad. Like, the experience yields... Pokemon from early routes generally have worse experience yields than Pokemon from later routes, so Bellsprout is better to fight. I don't know, Snowy. What are the... Uh, do you know the uh, exact experience yields for those Pokemon? Should I put that on the overlay? That doesn't seem like something I should put on the overlay. <laughs> experience yields. I could, but... Like, all anything that we can think of can be visualized. Uh, we just have to make a choice about what we really do want to prioritize because there's only so much. Uh, no, blue. <laughs> no more flurry on comments, please. Ah! <laughs> we just really have to prioritize what we want to use the screen real estate for. <laughs> uh, also, you will have noted on the right-hand side of the screen, I reverted all the changes that I had before because I couldn't figure out why the timer restarted. So I'll have to figure out why the timer reset and then fix it for next time. Yeah, we gotta worry about Scyther and Bayleaf, that's right. I think last time I leveled 25 for Spark. <laughs> Brutal. It's like Spark against the Bayleaf. The other, the other way I could do it is Flash, but then I have Flash on my set for like the entire game, which is very painful. So I don't know if I, oh gosh, I don't know if Flash is the solution. Well, I'll just keep this and use the 40 power flail for this. We need a VR overlay. Yeah, that would be sweet. Oh man, you put that in my brain now. I'm gonna think about that way too much. That'll help for the Psyduck. I use some screen real estate to explain that Flareon is YouTube's fault. Yeah. Just like I'll put a little bar along the bottom that says like, if the thumbnail is wrong, blame YouTube, not me. I'm really curious to see when I stop streaming and YouTube turns this into a VOD, if they're going to put the th Flareon thumbnail on it, because that'll be hilarious. <laughs> Maybe I'll just leave it. Uh, no, I won't leave it. Don't worry, I'll change it. I really like, um, I really love the, like, going and looking at YouTube and just seeing all my thumbnails and, like, that's why I started taking text off the thumbnails because I don't think it looks very good if there's text on the thumbnails being like, wow, this is the most amazing run ever. It's like, oh, now the thumbnail looks like trash. I have to take that off. <laughs> I can't, I artistically can't stand to have text on the thumbnail that isn't just like, hey, this is the version of the game that I'm playing because that makes sense to include there. I updated that text too, though. Now it's colorful, it's not white. I think the white text looks kind of bad. Do we get Swift? Probably not. Why would we get Swift? That's like asking for too much. We're just fighting everyone, by the way. Do we get Swift? No. Why would we get Swift? Of course we don't get Swift. <laughs> if you have to update all the thumbnail, put Flare on in the corner, yeah. Yeah, because someone who's watching this video after the fact will be so confused. Like, why is everyone asking about Flareon 
outfight him. All of these spinners are optional in my ROM. No, no, no. Just like take, I should Photoshop Lantern's eyes onto Flareon or something like that. <laughs> yes, water gun. Okay, things are getting better. Uh, we're not going to unlearn, like, Thunder Wave and stuff like that, but... I, I want those moves, because those moves can make miracles happen when you have a terrible fight and you don't want to level up for it. Like, I have been learning over the past year that in Generation 2, it is almost never a good idea to try to be consistent against the rival in Azalea Town. It's almost always a better plan to just be like, yep, I just used Flash, and then eventually he missed all of his attacks, and then I won. That is almost always the better choice because you lose so much time grinding on like level six to eight Pokemon that it just never is worth it. It's much better to just luck through them and have like eight resets. Like that's going to cost what? Each reset's like, let's say 25 seconds, 30 seconds. Eight resets is like four minutes of time. It's going to take you longer than that to grind to level 25 with the slow growth rate Pokemon. It'll take like eight to nine minutes. So you're twice as fast being inconsistent and having a bunch of resets. Also, someone mentioned, isn't it a reset earlier? No, no, no. Blackouts. Blackouts are separate metric. I'm currently thinking about what the best way to display that on screen for all of you is, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I have I had formerly built a hotkey that allows me to toggle the reset counter to be a blackout counter. Um, it was working, but we had software problems. It's not working currently, but it, it will be in the future. Hey, I finally made it to one of these videos. And I have to say, I've been quite enjoying your content, so keep it up. Also, Flareon, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the $10, Goldtooth Slayer. Um, it's good to have you here. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying the content. It's it's really great to know that the effort I put in is is valued. So we're going to get like 19 before Bugsy. I think Thunder Wave first turn against the Scyther will make the most sense. I'm gonna go back and heal. Just save my potions. You can, I have an antidote and a full heal, so I should be, you can just heal like that and then the super potion from the well. I don't think I have any more berries. Kind of unfortunate. I'll save the Paralyzed Cure Berry for the rival. Can you maybe put it in the empty space opposite the reset counter? But that empty space all fills up. It all fills up with, uh, what's it called? The uh, accuracy mods and, and held items and stuff. Okay, Bugsy, wow. Well, I don't know, I didn't even talk about it, but Bugsy was incredibly easy. Like, so simple. Oh, should have done the held item first. You don't really need the... See there, the held item shows up in the place where we would put it. And it'll look weird if I like if it's like on the next level down. Accuracy mods and stuff fill in the space underneath that. <laughs> ah, it's frustrating. Okay. Come on. Come on. Let's just mess it up. Yeah! <gasps> okay. Water gun does more damage, by the way. Come on! Yes, 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 yes. Fine, fine, fine. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. No way. We're going to do it. No resets to here. I think it was like three blackouts. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, I didn't get any repels. Yeah, you don't need Thunder Wave for that one. I think you do need Thunder Wave for the rival, though, so I'm glad I kept it. I think I need eight of these for most playthroughs. Get those two. Oh, 
How long do you expect to keep Flail on the moveset? Probably not that long. I don't think it's particularly useful. Yeah, we're gonna get Headbutt, obviously. Uh, we Unfortunately, we can't learn Swift, which is so annoying. Oh yeah, I need my Oddish. Not that. <laughs> That's not Oddish. It's a 50% chance in this area. Hey! This is actually better than Oddish, by the way. Because it learns, uh, it learns Cut, the Abra can learn Flash, and the Paris also learns Dig. But it, it's actually irrelevant. The Paris is not uh, needed in this run if you catch Psyduck, because Psyduck can also learn Dig. You can just delete Dig later into the game and utilize the escape ropes. Also, I think that getting Dig just for an HM user... Oh, it doesn't learn Headbutt. Are you kidding me? <laughs> ah, I didn't look at the move. I just assumed because everything learns Headbutt. But no, of course Lantern can't. Gosh. Well, when we get by Whitney, we get Surf. Then things will get better. I'm 100% sure that they will get better once we get Surf. Ah. <sighs> The pain. Do I need to like fight more people? So like, let's fight this guy. <sighs> yeah, side up is side up is better than Bidoof in terms of being an HM user. Also, you get, they're, they're a Psyduck early in Platinum. I don't know why people always use Bidoof. Like, Psyduck is really good. Like, Bidoof is not actually that good. It's only a good if you evolve it into a Beeper roll. Then it learns like everything. But uh, Bidoof learns like what? Like, I think it's like, it only learns like Rock Smash and, and Cut or something like that. It's very limited. And I think we're all just, we all just think it's good because it evolved in our first playthrough or something like that. Charo's being extremely noisy right now. Apologies. He's also not allowed in the room because he's fighting with the foster cat, so... He has to stay outside. And he will just cry. Poor guy. Yeah, the thing about, like, Alex Forest, like, uh, the reason I think Psyduck is the better HM user. Here, let's talk about, let's talk about HM users, okay? So, um, there's a couple choices for a water type HM user. Number one, Psyduck. Number two, Krabby. Basically, those are the two. There, You can get the Gyarados, but the catch rate on the Gyarados is so high that it never makes sense. You always, like, you can faint fighting it. You can also, because uh, it has Dragon Rage, so you can faint fighting it, and uh, it can also... Uh, just break out of like a ton of pokeballs and waste a lot of your time so it's much better to just knock the gyarados out or poke doll it if you can if you allow that in your rule set i don't of course so yeah you're gonna be like well that's inconsistent with your gen one and i'm not trying to be consistent between games um okay so uh either psyduck or krabby krabby cannot learn waterfall but psyduck can Krabby cannot learn Dig, but Psyduck can. So Psyduck immediately feels like it's going to be the better choice. But then Psyduck is only available during the night in Ilex Forest and um, in National Park. It's a 30% chance. I believe 10% or it's, it's like pretty uncommon in the Ilex Forest. Maybe 30% or less. I don't know for sure, but it's 30% in, in the forest. Thing is, if you're trying to catch a cut user, you're either going to get Bellsprout or you're going to get Oddish. Bellsprout is a 30% chance on the route just before and just after uh, Violet City, but Oddish is a 50% chance in Ilex Forest. Thing about Oddish is that Oddish is 50%, but you could also catch Paris. I believe it's like 5% or something like that, or 20% at night. It, it's pretty rare, but it. That means that the overall percentage of running into your user that is going to be an HM user in the forest is higher. As a result, I don't like to spend time, waste time now 
in the early routes trying to find the user that I'm looking for. Instead, I'll just catch in the forest, knowing that I could also run into a Psyduck before I run into um, my Oddish. That said, if I don't, then I'll just come here and catch the Psyduck. Then I'll just come here and catch the Psyduck after. Fine. Is it gonna... I hope not. Okay, good. Uh, the 25% level 7 orange comes with Sweet Scent. Oh, cool. I don't think Sweet Scent's really useful, though. Uh, for emulators, for Gen 4, like Melon DS is pretty good. Retroarch can work as well, and uh, BizHawk also works. I've been using BizHawk. Yesterday, I got my frame rates to be consistently 240 frames in Platinum. But, uh, it, unfortunately, it only works with the unwrapped version of Melon DS, so I can't connect with Gamehook to it. And I also cannot record replays, so it's basically out of the question, and we still have a frame rate problem. Hopefully, I'll be able to solve it soon, but... Not not a great position to to still be in. Oh, rain dance! Thank you so much for metronoming rain dance. That was extremely convenient for me because I am a water type Pokemon. And then I crit. Okay, Whitney was easy. Ah, uh, that that's a that's the game giving me some good luck after Faulkner. It's rare that the metronome helps you. Of course, we don't get rollout. Why would we get rollout? I'm technically treating this like a second playthrough, but I'm just going to knock the pseudo Udo out. Because I did the line before, so I didn't know. It's like, it's hard. Like, is it a second playthrough? Is it a first playthrough? Like, I don't really know. Like, I did half the playthrough with Lantern. And it's pre-evolution is fairly similar. Okay, let's get Surf now. Mm, could get Ice Beam first. Let's get Ice Beam first. So, I'll show you a couple things here. Over here, there is an Aether. Maybe it's useful. Over here, there is a guy with two ground type Pokemon that are fully evolved, the Nidos. He's great to fight if you have super effective damage because they give a lot of experience, which is not something that most Johto Pokemon do. Uh, as a slow growth rate Pokemon, I think this small amount of extra efficient training is a good idea. And then down here, there is a Hyper Potion, which can be useful for healing as you progress with your run. Lantern is around, should get rolled. I know, right? Yeah, this slow growth rate is painful. What if it had the medium slow growth rate? Would you, like, okay, we got Spark um, in the place of Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave kind of trash at this point in the game. Thunder Wave is good to hold on to in Gen 2, I find, uh, for Bugsy and for uh, Whitney, just because uh, it can break their combos. So whenever you can break combos with a move, uh, I usually hold on to it until I pass Whitney. And then once I pass Whitney, I give it up. Okay. Oh, the AI is really good at using Encore in Generation 3. I don't know if anyone knows that. It, they can trap you in, like if you're trying to set up, uh, Glacia's first Celio will just trap you in an endless Encore. It's so brutal. Just for reference, some Pokemon are beating the Rocket Plot line at this point in the game. <laughs> it's like, that's how behind we are. <laughs> Alright. We'll fight the Gyarados guy. He has got two Gyarados, and they're decent experience. And I have Spark. I'll also get the, the Magnet when I go back to Egerteak City. 
There's also two magic carp on this team, which are not great experience, but. I don't know if unstoppable, but it would be a lot better. It's early set is the thing that holds it back. If this was a generation one Pokemon, it would start with like Bubble Beam or something like that. I'd be like, hey, we're gonna give it Waterfall as a starting move. Like, thanks, that's perfect. And then you'd just steamroll the game at the beginning. But they're like, no, 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 Bubble. Bubble is the right move. <laughs> uh, bubble has to be the worst starting move. Like, what could be worse? It's constrict, I guess, in, in Gen 1. But, like, I would even take Constrict over Bubble with Lantern because at least it's neutral against almost everything. Ah, the pain of Headbutt. Can't believe that. Okay, we'll give up Supersonic now. Hidden Power Ice. And then teleport back to Ecritique City. We'll grab the Magnet next. Oh, no, 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 Okay. Uh, by the... Oh, no. Got the Apricorn. Really needed that. Here, you can just teleport back to the Pokemon Center. It's like, once you set your waypoint here, you can do a lot of stuff very quickly. Um, yeah, it's, it's efficient. I'm going to give it the Magnet because it needs all the help it can get. Also, it should probably get a healing item at this point. So like, let's see, um, let's see if I, uh, or what was I going to say? Oh gosh, I read a comment and then I lost my train of thought. <laughs> ah! Uh, I have looked at the Reggie's starting moves. Yeah. I have no other comments about the Reggie's at the current time. Hey, there was a Flareon, that's true. We saw a Flareon in the wild. I got to will at 58 minutes with Farfetch today. Yeah, that's good. Farfetch is really good. I'm making a video about Farfetch right now. Um, the uh, It's not like a official video. The, you'll see. Later this week, there is going to be a video that comes out that is a whole bunch of Pokemon in one video, and it's a big re-ranking video. I think it's like 50 minutes long, so it's relatively short for my channel. Um... And it's, uh, after the Electro vs. Magneton video, it's going to be, it's going to feel really relatively short. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's, uh, it's going to come out. It'll, uh, it goes through a whole bunch of Pokemon that I have played behind the scenes or on streams, talks about the strategies and then what their new rankings will be in my tier list. I might do it in the future if people really like it. But if people don't like it, then I, I'll never do it again. So I'm, I'm just trying new stuff out. It, like, there will be at least five comments being like, hey, just do your regular stuff. I don't want to see this. And like, okay, fine. Like, sure. But like, um, it might be interesting for other people. So I'm I was going to try new stuff, even if it uh, doesn't work out well. Like, sometimes there'll be things that'll just not hit, and that's okay. Can't let the fear of failure inhibit creativity. Still getting Flareon thumbnail comments. Love it. So we don't need to get the good rod if we catch the Psyduck, which is another advantage. And we don't need to buy uh, extra repels here if we catch the Psyduck. So there's a whole bunch of little advantages to catching the Psyduck. It makes that Mart a little bit faster. It makes there's there's no catching time right here. Um, the Krabby is a 50% chance, so it's more likely to occur, but... Um, overall, I, I do think that the Psyduck will be able to be obtained reliably in most playthroughs faster than the the Krabby and the Bellsprout or the Krabby and the Oddish. And you could play contextually as well. Like if you don't run into a a Psyduck in the forest, then you just get the you get the Krabby instead. There's also that option. I think stylistically, I'm probably just always going to go for the Psyduck. Then I don't have to... I also don't have to get the Dratini later on and teach it Waterfall. I can teach Whirlpool and Waterfall at the exact same time, which saves a little bit of menuing time. Hey, Scott, have you planned a new race for this year? There will be no race this year. Like, community race, there's going to be no community race, unfortunately. 
The three community race videos that I did did not perform particularly well on YouTube uh, in terms of like views and monetization, that sort of thing. I put a big sponsorship in the first one and then that um, did not work out well because uh, sponsors would like, they would like views, right? Um, and people to click on the links and things like that so that they're like, hey, we should continue supporting this guy and, and uh, buy another ad. Um, yeah. So they, they were just like, hey, or they didn't say anything, but it's just like, the feeling is just like, okay, I need to do things that will perform better. And I like doing the races, but the amount of work that they take, like the the cost benefit is, is not working out for the races at the current time. When that shifts, then I'll try another one. But at the current time, there is the cost benefit just doesn't work. Because I'm going to spend like 300, 400 hours on a project and then it's going to get less views than it would if I played like Emerald with one Pokemon doing only one playthrough. Like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, here is a, if you have Dig or an escape rope, you don't have to talk to this guy. You can just leave. <laughs> Why not do like Emerald where you force your... Yeah, I, Honey Badger, I, I will be doing that in Generation 2 where we force specific HM encounters to uh, appear, appear first. Yeah. That will be happening. I'm talking through the logic of like why I have come to the decision of using Psyduck. And remember, I like... For example, if... If I was just going to say, like, we're doing solo runs, there are no HMs. So, like, I can, I just have an item in my inventory that's already always there that allows me to bypass every single HM thing once I have the correct badge. I could do that. Like, I could just implement that item and we would be done. We would never catch HM users and it would be easy. Or I could have an NPC that would give me each one of my HM users uh, whenever I needed them. I could easily do those things. It's not difficult to uh, program into the game. I don't want to do that. I want to think through the game as if it is the vanilla game and then make choices based on the fact that that is what the encounters would be. Then, after I've decided that that's my approach, I implement the things that removes the RNG. So I was talking through my decision-making process as to why Psyduck is there. We also have not... I don't think the uh, flags are ready yet for Psyduck in the forest, but... Yeah. Or Psyduck in the in National Park. Okay, so we beat Morty. Obviously, easy. Next, we're gonna take on Chuck because we want the fly as fast as we want to fly as fast as possible, uh, so that I can get the Mystic Water to make Surf even more ridiculous. Yeah, ba basically, like. I don't want to, like, change the game for the sake of changing the game. I want to change the game so that we get more accurate results because, like I said earlier, my goal with these games is to play the game with every single Pokemon. And if my goal is to play the game with every single Pokemon, I have to do a lot of runs. In order to do a lot of runs, it means I can't do, like, a thousand playthroughs with every single Pokemon, which ideally is what I would like to do. I would like to genuinely sit down, do a thousand runs with every Pokemon, and then take the average data, the mean data, all of that, compare all of it, and then get some kind of like final computed score for the Pokemon that shows like objectively Lantern falls here when compared with Mantine, for example. That's what I would like to do. Uh, technologically, I think that will be possible in the future. Maybe give me like five years. Um, I think we will be able to do that, but. Right now, it's not possible, and uh, without that, my time is valuable, so I have to make decisions that are like, okay, so if I'm only able to play the Pokemon somewhere between 1 to 10 times, how do I eliminate all of the RNG that skews the results in the best possible way? And right now, uh, to maximize the amount of time that I save in both the playthrough and the edit, as well as making things more concise for everyone who's watching if I'm streaming, for ex example. Removing encounters in certain locations is the best choice, as well as just providing the HM user immediately to the player when they get their first encounter in that location. Yeah, AI is definitely going to be a solution here. But it has to be implemented in a way that's like, uh, mimics so like yeah I, 
I can't, I can't, I, I could talk the AI, like, uh, how to do a thousand ditto runs or something like that. Like, eventually I'll, I'm, I'll make a video like that. I don't know. Um, but I'll make it when I'm ready to make it. I'm not ready to make it yet. <laughs> no, no, the goal is to merge with the AI, not to, uh, not to have it steal the job. Just like... <laughs> How can it make what I do better? That's the question. With any new technology, there's always a bad downside and there's always an upside. And uh, as an eternal optimist, my goal is always to look at these things and go, all right, what's the upside? Um, yeah, I am ridiculously optimistic though, so. <laughs> I know a little bit about how machine learning works. Not for Pokemon related stuff, but a little bit. I haven't like done it myself. I haven't like programmed and trained a model, but I do know how it works. Uh, probably should have equipped an item for this. Probably should have got a second mint barrier or the, uh, the magnet for the Polyrath. I think I'll be okay. Chuck is really bad. Bark is good too. <laughs> Mrs. Hypnosis, okay. AI doesn't have Scott's personality. I don't know. I thought someone was going to make the joke that AI does have my personality. That's a... Uh, that feels more fitting, actually. Take that, everyone who comments that I'm monotone and boring to listen to. <laughs> I agree. It's a, uh, This is an interesting phenomenon, actually, of, like, uh, like viewing yourself doing uh, things... It's so interesting. I sometimes think that I'm like putting on like the big performance and like being ridiculous and outrageous. Then I go back and watch it and I'm like, wow, I'm not like not very animated at all. Then you watch someone else. I watch like a big streamer. Like, I don't know. You just like see a clip from someone. It's like, wow, they're like, they have so much personality. Like it really is the uh, over enthusiastic YouTuber. I just don't know how... I don't know how anyone does that and doesn't, like, completely destroy their voice in, like, five minutes. Everyone just has better vocal technique than me. That's obviously what it has to be. Yeah, the, pro the, the issue with AI that I find is that it's very good at, at solving a general task, but very bad at solving a precise task. So, like... We'll be able to get AI to beat the game easily. Like, that's not a problem. And we'll be able to get the AI to beat the game with any Pokemon. Like, that's also not a problem. There's maybe a time compute problem as to, like, how long is that going to take us to, to do to do it? Um, I'm sure all of this data already exists. That said, uh, getting it to beat the game in a specific way. Like, how do you make it so that it is not running a task every single time. And like, and then how much, like how humanized is it? Do we want it to be not humanized at all? Do we want it to be humanized? Like, are we trying to mimic human performance so that it's directly comparable with a result that you or I could get? Or are we going to try and make it something that is just like robotic? Like, yep, it's gonna get crits in every single battle because it knows exactly how to manipulate RNG blocks. That is like, that's the truly challenging part, in my opinion. I didn't make a prediction. Uh, bad. Like an hour and 40 minutes. That's my prediction right now. I, I, I don't think Lantern's very good in this game. Is there an... Can you get Amnesia on Lantern somehow in Gen 2? No, you can't transfer it back to Gen 1. It doesn't matter then. <laughs> I was like, maybe we can transfer back. No, no, no. That's not how that works. This is not a Gen 1 Pokemon. My back ports have made me think about this incorrectly. Ah! Yeah, if Pokemon asleep <laughs> equals false, use hypnosis. That's correct. That is how you make an AI perform like me. If Pokemon at less than 30% health, use rest. Those two if statements, we already have an AI that's perfectly mimicking me. 
Okay, so uh, I want to talk about a a tiny uh, optimization here. There, a question came up the other day. I was watching a snowy stream, and the question came up, which was, is it better to backtrack or escape rope out he of here and then walk back into the position where Lance meets you by the door to fight the electrodes? And it is, it is less steps. It's 97 steps to walk back. But it is, I think it's like 100 and some, 110 to escape rope out plus menu time and then walk back in. So it's better to backtrack like I do. However, there's a caveat here, which Squidgy mentioned in the chat. Uh, if you do not disable spinners and you make it by the spinner and you don't want to fight him, so you make it by the spinner that blocks off the executive's room, you should dig out and then walk back in because you'll skip the spinner and save a little bit of time. And the, the second discrepancy there is about two seconds. So like, if spinners are disabled or you fought the guy on the way in, uh, you'll save two seconds by backtracking. One to two seconds. It's very small. So like, this is a tiny thing. I think about this stuff all the time because I'm detail oriented, but um, for most people, it, it's not relevant at all. Also, if you can manip the spinner, if it takes you a second to manip the spinner, it's just better to escape rub out. <laughs> Because if you mess the manip up, then you'll go get into a trainer battle. Whereas if you just say, I'm investing the second in using the escape rope to then come back in later. Um, yeah, it's just like you you invested the time somewhere else and it, it's basically a net neutral interaction. So go with the one that's safer, that doesn't, uh, that isn't prone to human error. I used to think about that a lot during when I was playing StarCraft. Okay, Price, he's going to be easy. I'm spamming Spark and uh, obviously on the pile of swine. I always do that at least once with electric Pokemon. Don't worry, it's out of my system now. I won't do it next time. Um, anyways, uh, when I was playing StarCraft a lot, I used to think about that all the time. Is like, if I'm going to play two strategies and each one of them has a 55% chance to win, I'm going to play the one that requires... that that is less mistake dependent. So... If I make less mistakes against the train, like, I am, I'm not explaining this well. I'm going to play the strategy that is more permissive to mistakes. So if the strategy gets punished really hard from a mistake, don't play it. If the strategy gets a worse result, if I make a mistake, don't play it. Provided they get the same results, remember. Like, if they get different results, then maybe it does make sense to go for the thing that it has, uh, that's trickier in terms of execution. Uh, she should be like very simple, but I'm gonna save just in case. Yeah, they're all guaranteed one hits and I'm, I would speed everything. Her Pokemon are very slow. Okay, so now we go to the rocket radio tower. Rocket tower is what it feels like. Yeah, lantern would be so good if it started with spark. Imagine that. It would still struggle a little bit against the rival in Azalea Town because of the bay leaf, but obviously you can just decide like, oh, we're going to make him choose for alligator, and then it's easy, but... Feels nice to not be walled by Steelix, I agree. That Steelix is... It's kind of brutal sometimes. Like, on Thursday we're gonna play Yanma. <laughs> Steelix. Steelix is not fun then. I don't know why I put Spark in spot one. Don't do that. Uh, red is going to be a concern. Karen will probably cause some resets. Other than that, I think we'll be fine. Johto is, Gen 2 is generally quite easy. Yeah, Yanma gets like nothing. The pace feels like it's picking up. It is. It is definitely picking up. 
Like, as soon as we clear Azalea Town, it starts to get a little bit faster, and then you get Surf, and then it starts getting much faster. Yeah, like, Water Gun would be good as a starting move. Yeah, Jasmine is the most consistently difficult battle. I agree. I think da Jasmine is the best gym leader in, in Gen 2. And like, there are other ones that are can cause resets, like Chuck, for instance. Uh, Snowy, the way that Snowy talks about Chuck, I think, is the most accurate. It's like you're never going to get stuck fighting Chuck. You'll, you'll always be able to win just because he's so bad. It's like Surge in Generation 1. You're never going to get stuck fighting Surge. You might have some resets, it might be annoying, but you're not going to get stuck. Whereas, like, you can genuinely just get stuck and never be able to beat Jasmine. And, like, just sit there and grind and grind and get hundreds of resets without... And then you have to level up or change your strategy in some way. I don't know if Whitney is the second strongest. I have to think about that. Let's, let's go through all the gym leaders. Like, Bugsy is pretty good in some scenarios where the Scyther is strong. Um... He can also cause issues with um, the Kakuna if it sets up Poison Sting and then the Scyther can do just enough damage. So sometimes challenging, but not consistently challenging, I would say. Uh, Whitney is next. Whitney feels very similar to Bugsy. I would say about on par with difficulty. Morty is almost never a problem. By the way, this is why Hidden Power Ice. Because it's special and we can knock that thing out with it. And then it's really good against two trainers. Morty, yeah, it's so like Morty is, he's sometimes problematic, but generally he's just missing hypnosis. Uh, so he feels like, he feels similar to Chuck in that, like, the only reason he's scary is if the Ghastly uses Curse turn one and you can't knock it out in one hit. That That is scary. Um, after that we have Price, who obviously is the worst gym leader. You know Faulkner might be second best. Uh, Claire is quite good if you... If you don't run Hidden Power, Claire is quite good. If you ban Return, Claire is quite good as well. Because usually you don't have very good moves by that point. You can't access things like the Dragon Breath TM before her. Icy Wind is quite un inconsistent and it has low base power. I, I wouldn't say she, like, in my format with Hidden Power and Return, Claire doesn't feel problematic. But I can see in another format that she would be. So, like, Morty Curse Stalling is a threat. Price, uh, price is never a threat unless you're four times weak with, like, Gligar or something like that. Mm. You know, I, I think right now how I would rank it in my mind. This is my tier list video, by the way. It's a Flareon tier list. Um, in my Flareon tier list, I think I would definitely put... Okay, I think Jasmine is number one. I think Faulkner is number two. Again, both of these trainers are easy if you have the things you need to deal with them from the start, but they can wall you. Like, we saw how Faulkner could wall a Pokemon in this video. You're weak to Mud Slap, so he's spamming it, you lose your accuracy, and then you have to train. Um, it's not a wall like Brock by any means, but it, it still can be problematic. I think third, I would put Whitney, Bugsy, and Morty, all of which feel like they can cause problems to you, but they're not really good at, like, consist... No, I think Whitney and Bugsy are, are third. And then Morty and Chuck. Morty and Chuck are fourth. Claire is fifth. And Price is last. I think that's my Gen 2 tier list of gym leaders. Maybe? Hopefully not. Alright, so we just beat the Rocket Plot line and we're at an hour. Um... This is not good. This is not a good time. You want to do this at like 34 minutes. 35 minutes. Maybe 45. Oh, no, I'm, I'm being a little bit optimistic there. 
Maybe like 45 at the worst. Like for 45 to 50. You like... If I'm clearing the Elite for somewhere between 50 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes, I'm usually like, this is a decent run. But we're going to be, we're going to be like an hour and 15 clearing the Elite for an hour and 18, something like that. Yeah, Faulkner is way more forgiving than Brock, 100%. Because you can just go to Sprout Tower and train. And then also his Pokemon don't have, uh, his Pokemon don't resist as much as Brock's do, whereas Brock has so many resistances, so. Like, normal types. Generally, Pokemon start with one normal type move. Uh, there are some rare circumstances where a Pokemon won't get a normal type move early on in the game, but ordinarily you'll get something like Tackle or Scratch um, to start things off, and then you can hit Faulkner for at least neutral damage. Whereas with Brock, if Pokemon typically start with normal moves, then Brock perfectly counters that, slowing those Pokemon down. So there's a bunch of Pokemon that have brutal times against Brock. Um, Shelder, Magnemite, uh, what are other ones? Tauros, Gyarados, those Pokemon all have terrible Brock splits in yellow version. Price having a Lapras is a cool idea. You should have a Deli Bird. You shouldn't have a seal. A seal makes no sense. One, two. Oops, sorry. Messed that up. Embarrassing. I don't think we need to train. I think we're okay. Ice path. Look at these puzzles. So difficult. Not actually. Yeah, Beedrill's another one that's bad against Brock. I don't think I need this. We'll check uh, damage ranges after, but I don't think I need this to beat Claire's Pokemon. And I'll definitely not need it for Lance's Pokemon with four times damage. I'll definitely need rest for red though, so we'll pick that up now. There's a max potion right here hidden just in case you're running low on healing items. I'm not in this case, but then protein and PP up. We'll save the PP up for Thunderbolt. I have a Psyduck with Surf. And also, my Lantern has Surf, of course. Yeah, none of the Gen 3, that is something. In Gen 3, there doesn't really feel like there's a trainer that is, like, particularly awful. All of them have their downsides I would say of the gym leaders and this will probably surprise people because as a kid he was I thought one of the strongest gym leaders but in a solo challenge I tend to think of Brawly as the easiest and that's largely because he's one of the gym leaders you can skip like you have to face Roxanne to get on the boat Brawly you don't have to face him until you beat Flannery so you can just skip him so for Pokemon that struggle against him you just go and beat Watson and then Flannery and come back and fight Brawly and he's not an issue. So you don't really feel forced into it when you have a weakness, whereas all the other ones, they do force you in. So uh, that's why Watson becomes so powerful, just because like you have to fight him and there's only a, so much experience available. Like You're going to be level 30 to 35 at the max if you're fighting everyone. Okay, I only have a 64% chance with the hidden with the Nevermelt Ice to one-shot these Dragonairs. I'm getting very lucky. Hey, I got all of them. Wow. Okay. I have a three hit on the Kingdra. Okay. Paralysis is nice. I thought she was going to heal. Okay, we're good. She has a healing item, right? 
I just never see it because I usually two hit with return. That's what I expect to happen there. Nope. I'm still paralyzed, but I'll be fine. Okay, here, I'll show you. So now I can teach both Whirlpool and Waterfall at the same time to my Psyduck, saving a little bit of uh, menuing time because I don't have to open the inventory again and navigate around. Just teach them both here. Then that. Yeah, Winona is... Winona can be problematic. Let me, let me think about Gen 3. Who is... Okay, so... I think Brawly is the worst for the reasons I stated before. I think Watson is best. I think Tate and Liza are second. That's so obvious. And I, again, I'm always speaking from a solo running perspective. We are just solo running the game. I'm not thinking Nuzlocks or that kind of thing. So please, when you hear something on my channel, just unless I state in a Nuzlocke, know that I'm talking about solo running the game. Okay, so yeah, I think... Watson first, Tate and Liza second. That's so small. If you could convince me to rank those two at the same, because they're both very, very, very good, depending on the Pokemon you're using. But I do think that Watson is slightly stronger. Kind of ridiculous, because Tate and Liza, you have to fight two Pokemon. But that that um, that battle has been one that I feel like I've figured out more and more. Either you just use all your rare candies right before it, or, um, I'm not doing man mode because I'm talking. Uh, either you use all your rare candies right before, or you uh, get a move that hits multiple Pokemon like Surf. You can equip a Chesto Berry. Teaching rest for the fight is possible because you get it right before the fight. There are There is play. You can also go back to the move reminder and teach a move that like lets you resist Earthquake and then knock the other Pokemon out while just tanking the Claydol's Earthquakes. Like iron defense or something can be useful there. So there, there's a lot of play in those in in the case of Tate and Liza. Whereas Watson, you have one rare candy by that point in the game, and there are a limited number of trainers. There's not nearly as many trainers as are available for Tate and Liza. It's just, I, I think those are the reasons that make Watson a little bit more challenging. It was daytime for a second. My software didn't catch that for some reason. Neat. Um. Yeah, you can get through the flash cave without flash. Uh. Okay, who's third place? So Flannery feels luck based. Probably fourth place. She feels similar to like Bugsy and um, Whitney. Maybe. I think maybe Norman is third place. There are there are a lot of there's a lot of play for him, but he he is quite good. I think maybe after that. Just after Norman would be Flannery. And then we have, like, probably Juan is the worst gym leader. Juan and Winona, maybe. On par with each other. They, again, they, they like they can cause problems. Really, Juan is only if he uh, gets good confusion luck with the love disc or he sets up with the king draw with double team. Oh, I forgot Roxanne. Yeah, Roxanne's obviously, like, number number three. Roxanne's very good. Don't do that. This might be my most distracted playthrough of all time. Like I'm, I don't think I'm playing very well. Okay, Whitney, here we go. No, not Whitney. Will. Another W name. Uh, Will. Will. This, he's got to be one of the worst Elite Four members. He's quite bad. Okay, Reflect is annoying, but I have all special moves. 
Uh, I guess at the exception of, uh... Flail. And Spark is not yet physical. Because we're Generation 2. Alright. That was easy. Yeah, this football is rolling. Footballs are not very good at rolling. That, uh... Yeah. I stand by my statement. This football is rolling. It's at least trying. Uh, we're not using flail. It's just there. I don't want to waste time and teach return. Like, why would I teach return? I'm gonna, uh, in like every scenario, I'm gonna be using surf instead. Either surf or spark. There's not really a reason to have return in my opinion. Like, in both of these last two fights, I didn't want to have return. I guess for the jinx, I could have used it, but does that, does that like justify like 10 seconds of time opening the inventory and teaching it? I don't think so. So I, that's why I haven't taught it. Just like if there's no justification for teaching the move, you don't want to teach it, even if it would be good on the set as like a compliment theoretically. Like a theoretical compliment is not a good reason to make a decision in a playthrough. There needs to be like a, like this actually creates some kind of meaningful work. And if it's like return gives me a one hit for this one specific Pokemon, blah, 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 blah. It's like, that's also not helpful. Like it needs to, we're going to lose this by the way. Bruno is good. Um, I guess unless the Machamp misses. It can miss. 20% chance to miss. No no guard yet. <laughs> no, yeah! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No! Ah. Oh. We'll keep playing. We'll add the time stealer at the end. Don't know why that's happening. Why is that happening? I'm terrified to use rare candies right now. I also forgot one. Oh, this is easy. Mystic Water. I'm not sure why the clock is resetting. I don't think I changed the code at all, so... Uh, I know the reset counter. The reset counter did increase, and then when the ROM reloaded itself, everything restarted. Uh, the timer, we're not going to be able to fix the timer, unfortunately. Apologies. Hmm. I think I have to use the rare candies. See here, it'll, it should, oh, it didn't restart this time. Why didn't it restart through this reset, but it restarted on the last reset? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, we don't know why the clock reset. We don't know. It's a bug, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm at the same amount of information that all of you have. The clock reset when I restarted, it happened twice in this stream. We don't know why. I'll have to figure it out later. I really need to be able to track real time in the repl replays. That's like, I really, really, really need that. Okay, we're, we're fine at the higher level, so no problem. I just add the time here to the time that I had when I reset. Pretty simple. Right, so like the frame, the frame where the timer resets, we'll just take that time and then we'll just add it to the time that the timer stops at when I beat red. And if it doesn't um, stop at red, then there's some kind of bigger bug that's occurring. We'll also have error logs and stuff from this playthrough to, to look through and see. 
But what happened? Okay, this is going really poorly. The Vile Plume. Uh, you don't want to get paralyzed. Getting paralyzed is pretty painful. I think I should be fine still, though, because I'm quite good against the Houndoom and the Murkrow. Uh, well, unless... Okay, I I don't think the Murkrow can do enough damage, but I might miss my attack. Yep, that'll do it. Restart here? No. I don't know why it's not resetting every single time. So what the what my software is normally doing is it it watches the player's trainer ID, the player ID I should say, uh, and then when the player ID changes from what the expected values are, it will reset the timer when you click new game. But it doesn't actually make sense to me. Again, really? I can still get sub 30 minutes, yeah. Oh, this is bad. This fight's real bad. That's going to be a loss. I'm going to take too much damage. I don't want to play it out. Playing the fight out sometimes is a mistake. Yeah, 90% of Karen's difficulty is because of the Umbreon, yeah. Yeah, I have bad ranges here. I need to be like level 55 for this Umbreon to always get the two hit. I bet that that is... Oh yeah, I just barely am... Actually, it's, it's worse than that. My damage range is 42% to 50%, so the best possible damage range knocks it out. And then I basically pray for the rest of the fight, because I don't have good damage ranges against any of these Pokemon. I only have one rare candy. Oh yeah, Super Shucky resetting my briefly flash. But this has never happened before. Um... I have not upgraded my build of Super Shucky in quite a while, and I've played Gen 2 since then, and this has not happened before. So it has to be something in my front end. It's like the only thing that makes sense. Game hook has also been constant. Wow. Wow. Um. Remember when we said we were getting some momentum? It was starting to feel a little bit smoother? Yeah, no. Apparently Karen is going to ruin all of that. Okay, that's ideal. No, never mind. It's worth noting, paralysis is a 25% chance to miss your turn. So... It should only be a 1 in 4 shot of her boiling the attack. Just has to happen at the right moment, though. Why'd she send in the Murkrow first? Ah. Uh. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is bad. Think about how bad this would be if I didn't have hidden power ice. We'd have to be using return for the vile plume. This is definitely going to be a loss. Yep. Okay, can Flareon do it? Let's find out. Well. If Sand Attack misses and Stun Spore misses, then yes, we can. Yeah, Paracurse is a brutal combo. This is how we're going to win. Not the most convincing performance from me, but... Alright, we did it. Flareon defeats Karen. Now we only have Lance left. I don't think that we go... I think we keep Mystic Water. 
I think that Spark will still one-hit the Gyarados, and Hidden Power will still one-hit all the Dragonites. One-hit. Yeah, Sunspore has the 25% debuff. My timer reset. Okay. Yeah, this is the best Elite's 4 split I've ever got. Good job, Lantern. Sorry, Flareon. Alright, let's see if the timer uh, resets here. Because I'm going to reset. It should reset right now. No, it doesn't. It only reset the first time. I don't get it. It's like the first reset I had in the playthrough, the timer got messed up. But then following that, it was fine. Takes 80,000 Poké Dollars to buy one of the uh, Move Tutor moves, by the way. Where are you, buddy? What? That's a bug. Ah. Uh... I apologize, I'm kind of frustrated. Um, no, 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 it's not supposed to reset the, the, um, reset counter after the league. There is a specific edge case programmed in to prevent it from incrementing. I'm, I'm frustrated. I don't think I'm going to do a second playthrough today. Apologies. Um, there are just too many software problems, and... I've been dealing with software problems for, like, over a month now, and I have to say that, like, my ability to emotionally regulate when, um, when faced by them is, is slowly, uh, or quickly diminishing. I just want things to work again. And they have not been working for a significant period of time. It might be because it's frozen at night, but I don't think that's it. Okay. Just a second, we have to step outside of Goldenrod City. Into the Goldenrod City. I'll pause here. What is the map for this? Goldenrod is the map. Map number is two. Goldenrod map number two. Oh, it's not time of day. One second. Goldenrod map number... Map, if the map group equals Goldenrod and map number equals two, set time of day, Saturday time of day. Does this guy only show up at certain times of day? Let's look him up. Wednesday and Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday. The game is saying it's Saturday right now.
Maybe the code to stop it incrementing is related to the timer bug? No, it's not. Those are separate. It's Saturday. Yeah, I know the clock reset. I've been talking about it for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it feels like. Ah, uh, maybe he's sick today, yeah. Gosh, this is frustrating. Like, I can just use Gamehook to replace. I can, I, I can edit the memory in real time. Like, there's not, like, the problem um, of, like, adding it to my set. I'm more so frustrated. I'm frustrated with the stuff just not working. Like, it's supposed to work. I didn't change this function. And it is working. Like, the day is set. Okay, we're just going to change the time of day to day because apparently that is, like, the thing that's... Making it wrong, I guess. Like, nope, he's still not there. Like, I can uh, not. Uh, uh, so, um, I've talked about this before in my videos, but stubbornness is one of uh, my character flaws. Eh. In this kind of case, like, I could just, like, add it onto my set and stuff, but, like, that doesn't help us solve the problem long-term. Like, it's still just going to be a problem that I'm going to have to fix at some point, so we we need to just correct it. So, like, everything appears to be setting properly, but he's just not spawning. Maybe I don't understand the behavior properly. It goes to Sunday when I'm in here. And it goes to Saturday when I'm outside. It goes to Sunday when I'm in here, Saturday when I'm outside. Okay, I know how it's happening. Okay, so the game is setting it to... The game is setting it to sat Or my overlay is setting it to Saturday when I exit the building. But... The game will check right before that when it's trying to load the map and go, which sprite should we populate? It should say, not that guy's sprite because the game is currently Sunday when you're inside the building. And then what it will do is it will populate the sprites. Even though it's Saturday, he will not show up because the sprite has not been turned on and rendered with the map. So I need to set it so that when it's in the Pokemon Center, it sets the game to Saturday as well. And then when you go into the Pokemon Center, it will be correct. Well, so what map is this? Goldenrod 20. So if... Blah, blah, blah. First Goldenrod 2. Goldenrod map 2 is the one. This one. We duplicate this line. And then... That or... That. Goldenrod equals Goldenrod... 20, set it to Saturday. Reload the overlay. We're going to turn the time of day back to night. And now he should appear when I go in and out again. He won't be here now. And then he'll be here when I come out this time. Yep. Okay, fixed. Well, we used it on Surf. All right, fine. Ah. <sighs> 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 
maybe it's time to just do a text stream. Yeah, maybe it is. What am I doing? I'm so all over the place right now. This really threw me off. Is it possible to block out train on Azalea Town Rival? Yes! Yes, it is. Yeah, I have learned, so like, one thing I think, I think I've gained a lot of wisdom in my 31st year on the planet, and so much of that wisdom, by the way, this, I don't think curse works for Lantern, because Pikachu is too strong, but we're going to find that out. Anyways, I feel like I've, I've learned a lot of uh, wisdom this year, and one piece of that wisdom is like, when there is a task that can be done now, do it now. Never wait. Like, putting something off that can be just accomplished right now with like five minutes of effort, is it's far better to just do it now than putting it off. Over and over again, I have been... I have really lost out when... I decided like, well, I'll just like... I'll just fix this thing later like it's not that big of a deal for now like I'll just click out of this error message and just we'll go on to the next thing and we'll be done um yeah then what ends up happening is that I do that like three or four times and it just becomes this persistent bug and then I forget how I would fix it and what the problem really was I just know that it's there and then they all stack up like this huge mess of all these tiny problems and then it's death from a thousand cuts because you just can't manage all of it I think, uh, yeah, I think I am going to do some coding after this. I don't know if I'm going to leave this stream. Uh, I'll leave it up because people will have seen it and they'll be like, I'll put a, maybe I'll put like something in the title or something. Uh, that's like, there are a lot of software bugs just because I don't want people to click on it and think they're going to get really entertained. And then it's like just a really buggy, boring stream. Hopefully not boring though. I don't know. seems like most people are having a good time, so... Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I should probably magnet by default. Just because uh, Thunderbolt has a chance to paralyze, whereas Surf doesn't, so it's a slightly better move to use when doing neutral damage with both. Um, I think the timer issue is actually going to be quite easy to diagnose now because it appears that it only happens after the timer has been reset once. It's like, would you ever do a live stream of coding debugging? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, for a long time, I haven't really, like, I've been just thinking people won't want to see that. There'll be like five people that'll want to see that, but most people won't. Um, but I, I think I will do it at some point. It seems like quite a few people are interested in how stuff like works behind the scenes, so you can do that live. Oh no, that's a mistake. You don't want to go down here. Ah, 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 <laughs> oh, sometimes like, okay, so some days you play, someone told me this, a sports psychologist when I was in a StarCraft team, a sports psychologist told me some days you're going to show up, you're going to play your A game. It's going to feel like you're unstoppable. You're going to feel like everything you do is just fluid and flowing and you're going to be, it's going to, it's going to feel like the best version of you. And then other days you're going to show up and you're going to play your C game. It's going to feel like everything's going wrong and nothing is working and you're a terrible player. But most days you'll show up 
and you're gonna play your B game where you're just kind of doing okay. It's not perfect, but it's passable. Today feels like a C game day in terms of my play. I'm just like, whoa. I feel slow, like sluggish in my execution. And then I feel like little things like getting indoors and stuff like that have just been uh, more tricky than it normally is. <laughs> the guy who's just standing there looking, yeah, and you have to like make one step up and then like go to the side to avoid him. Yeah, he's stressful. Yeah, R2. Yep. Yeah, and like I've like throughout my whole life, I've always done performance related things. Like, uh, this is performance related in some ways. The voiceover I do is performance related. Um, and then I, as a musician, I was always performing. So. In performance, that always applies. And it does really feel like, um, it does really feel like uh, the brain resets overnight. Like, it feels like the C game day lasts with you for the whole day. Like, I have, it's very hard to shake out, shake yourself out of a C game day and then start performing really, really, really well. I slept decently last night. Like, I, I don't know if I can attribute this to any particular... Like, I ate quite well yesterday. I've been trying to eat better in general. That's, like, one of my... This year, I would like to get more healthy. Um, I don't know, but, like... I've been really focused on the channel and less focused on my health as of late. Like, I take care of my mental health and that kind of thing, uh, but my physical health is what I'm referring to. It's like, I don't like exercise. Um, I just, I've never been the guy that's been like, oh, I want to go out and play soccer. Like, that's never been the thing appealing to me. It was always like, oh, I want to go inside and get on my computer and like build something, create something. That always felt really engaging. So that's a lot of time spent just sitting in a very, uh, like, uh, what is it called? What's the word? Not docile, um, not solitude, but it starts with an S. What is it? That, ah, gosh. That S word that means, um, Sedentary. That's the word. Sedentary. Very sedentary lifestyle. So I'm just like uh, trying to like do more active things, go to spin class when I can. Um, should start lifting weights again. Yeah, Kevin, thanks. Anyways, I'm, I'm trying to do that this year, trying to get more active, trying to improve my health. So I'm trying to eat a little bit better. Um, yeah. I wonder how Parasite would do in Gen 2. Yeah, me too. Oh, I made that mistake again. I had almost got this out of my play, but then... But then it's back. By the way, uh, you might notice that with the streams this year, I'm going to do them in kind of like cycles. So I'm going to say stream. I'm going to stream like a bunch of Gen 2 runs for like three or four weeks. Then I'm going to stream a bunch of Emerald runs. Oh, I didn't fix the power plant. Where does this take me? Okay, good. Um... I, what I really got to do is I got to hook up my computer in front of a spin bike and then do a spin class. And I, I have to spin, do the spin class until, until I finish the playthrough. That's the, that's the true way to get me to exercise. <laughs> Just it's like, I, I beat Pokemon Crystal while having my heart rate at 160 BPM. Oh, I didn't get that. Oh gosh. Is it BPM? Is that how we measure heart rate? I think so. Hey, 
Hey Scott, what's your favorite Pokeball? The Premier Ball. It's a great Pokeball. Um. Okay. I, I said I wasn't sure about the BPM thing because I'm so used to music and I was like, that's a music term. Like, is that the medical term that we use for like hearts? Like I was uh, second guessing myself. But yeah, apparently it is. Cool. Okay. Sure. All right, so it's been like 20 minutes since Bruno. I don't really remember what the time was when the when it reset. We're at like maybe an hour and five minutes or something like that. By the way, uh, a while ago I made the choice to not use Live Split anymore and instead have my timer be an integrated part of my overlay. The reason is then all the data from the timer is immediately accessible to every other portion of the overlay, which will be useful for some fun features that I have in mind that have not been developed yet, hopefully coming sometime this year. I've been thinking about them for long enough. It's time to get them out of my brain. But it's also helpful because then the software can be recording all the splits internally and saving them in a file, which I, I didn't have... I had that capability before with my auto-splitting program, but I didn't have the ability to edit it because I had not written the program myself. And I don't really know Python well enough to like sit down and just in like a couple days make an edit. So it would have taken me an extended period of time to like manipulate it. So it made more sense to just integrate the auto-splitter and the overlay into one program. Downside to this is that I had to figure out how the overlay would how the overlay would start and stop the timer. And essentially the logic I figured out is I figured out a way that when you press the new game button in the main menu, the timer restarts. And then if you um, beat red, as soon as you beat red, it will stop the timer. Okay, beat Janine. Also, this means we can get data from like every battle. Because before the auto splitter was only collecting data during certain battles, but now it doesn't matter which battle it is, we can just collect the data. And I'm collecting three different types of data. Data from the, uh, what is it? Every trainer battle, then data from only specific trainer battles, and then a data that sheet that has like everything on it. Okay, blue. Um, this might be a little bit tricky. Kinda worried about it. See, grass types? Um, hidden power electric is like perf- or hidden power ice is perfect at covering. Uh, the electric and water types inabilities to hit those Pokemon for super effective damage. Alright, I have to hit this thing during the sun with Surf, but it's still four times damage, which is enough. Um, Arcanine, obvi ooh, that crit extreme speed did a lot, but it doesn't survive, so I'm definitely going to one-shot the Gyarados and then easily beat Blue. No problems. Okay. I would hope that eventually it can be a Scott's Thoughts run without technical issues. 
Someone said, I forget who it was. Was it you? I don't remember who it was. Someone said, my channel is essentially just like a tech demo channel that is masquerading as a Pokemon channel. And that's 100% what it is. Like, I'm making a bunch of like custom tech for Pokemon games that are... And it's just like, well, we also do solo runs. I think I only have two rare candies. Or did I have three? I have four? Okay, yeah, that's right. There should be 10 in total. I'm gonna be level 66 for red. Now, last time I used, last time I used uh, Rain Dance, I'm gonna go get it just in case. I, would, I hope I don't have to use it. No. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, okay. I'll have to remember that it was you. But that's the most accurate thing. I just want to, like... I want to provide, like... Where, where it really started was like when I would watch these videos I would be constantly tabbing out to Bulbapedia and like calculators and stuff and like doing my own stuff behind the scenes and not watching the video and I was just frustrated that like I couldn't just watch someone's video um, and have all the information just be embedded within the video that I needed to see I was like well when I started making videos I was like looking at all the blank space on the screen just like why don't I just fill that with youthful stuff and then the thought of like, just fill it with useful stuff immediately turns into this giant um, quest, I guess, to to make uh, an overlay that is dynamically updating for ab absolutely everything or as much as is possible. Okay, do we run Rain Dance or do we run, well, let's try the Rain Dance strat first with leftovers, and then we can always replace Rain Dance if it's not working. Okay, the Pikachu outspeeds. That's why this is a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. And we don't one-shot the Pikachu. Oh. The paralysis. Not great. Come on. I can't set up Rain Dance on the Pikachu because its Thunder will then bypass accuracy checks. Which is not a good idea. Maybe I let it bypass once and then get the Rain Boosted damage and then knock the Pikachu out. Because it can always, like, it'll charm turn one and then one Thunder and I can survive that. Now I have more damage for the Espeon, which is helpful. Will I survive a second hit from it? Yeah. All right. So I can make it to the Snor Venusaur. Uh, I don't know what to do against this thing. That's why my brain just stopped working. Hey, it rare it rarely uses Giga Drain, by the way. When it does, the reason is is usually that it's uh it realizes it can knock out with either Solar Beam or Giga Drain, so then it just randomizes between the two. Okay, we need a different strategy. We can't unlearn Surf in the current state, but we can do this. Now Return is suddenly relevant, now that we've gotten to red. Stop. <laughs> Stop paralyzing me turn one. Yeah, I just miss a bunch, thank you. Okay, apparently I have enough special defense to just kind of like weather this thing's hits. We'll eventually run out of PP to it. Only has 10. Also, red is not showing up on the one side of the screen. I, I realize that. I don't know if that's been happening every single time we've been fighting him, but I just realized it now. Either way, it's a glitch. He should be there. Okay, there we go. All right, is this ready to... Return the football fish, let's do it. Okay, like, 
This is the... Here's the disappointing thing about Generation 2. It's like, you try the Rain Dance strat and then you immediately realize, like, actually... Hey! That was weird. Why did his team show up right then? Oh my gosh! Plus 6 return did not one-shot the Snorlax. Did he set up Reflect? Did I miss a Reflect? I'm pretty sure the Espeon attacked me. Uh, it, I think it's a Reflect. Am I going to live this? Hopefully I live this. Yep. <laughs> what?! Okay, well we did it, but like... Oh. Okay, the timer stopped, so at least that works. Okay. Uh, finish time of obviously 31 minutes and 26 seconds. We need to go back though in the stream and, and figure out what the actual finish time is. I gotta go watch my own stream. One second. Okay, almost got it, almost got it. One eleven forty three was the time before. So then we will add this to that. Oops, sorry about that. One, eleven, forty-three, then thirty-one, twenty-six. One hour, forty-three minutes, and nine seconds. I think eleven resets and three blackouts. Thank you. Tr yeah, S plus 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 tier flare Flareon run. Yeah. Also on YouTube, it is showing up as the lantern thumbnail for me. So like, I don't know what's happening for everyone else. Yeah, April Fools. YouTube is just like, actually, you're gonna have the wrong thumbnail. Okay. Um. All right. Let's let's see if we can figure out why exactly this error is occurring with the timer. Um. I'm just gonna. Give me one second. I want to get up a window so that you can see my coding. Apparently it takes longer than I was expecting. I thought this was going to be like three clicks. Yep. And I'm just going to make the window a size that you can actually see everything so that we're not missing out details for people who are interested. Okay. Yeah, this is what uh, things look like behind the scenes. Um, I appreciate, like, there's going to be a ton of suggestions about how to make the code better. I would appreciate if people would not make suggestions about how to make the code better at the current time until I have resolved the bug that I'm fixing. Um, I think that that'll just create too much confusion, and I do know that a lot of my code is spaghetti code. Like, this giant if-else statement block should not be written this way. It 100% there's like a more efficient way to do this that'll be far easier to debug that sort of thing. 
Um, yeah. Uh, I was bad at writing code when I started these things, so there's a lot of stuff that just isn't very good. Uh, and I'm sure there's way better ways to do it. But for now, we need to figure out why exactly we are having the error that we're having. So, it appears that what we're getting is we're getting a, like, uh, like a new run error. So there's this function here, like when I press this shortcut, does that shortcut get pressed? Okay, I'm gonna show you another piece of software. This, I, I highly recommend this software if you're playing a non-competitive game. If you're playing a competitive game, please check with the rules of the game to see if this software is allowed within the rules because in some cases it's banned because like it's gonna give you a material advantage over other players. I will not advocate ever for cheating um, with or without, like within a Pokemon game or uh, outside of a Pokemon game if you are cheating in a way that impacts other people. If you want to cheat playing a solo game for yourself, please do that. I think that you have a right to um, play a, play the games that you have purchased or are subscribing to or are available for free in a way that is fun for you. But uh, yeah, okay, here we go. So this is, uh, it's called Rewast, like R-E-W-A-S-D. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, it allows you to remap basically anything on a controller so this is my current controller, which is an Xbox Elite controller. It has paddles on the back, so four paddles. Um, and then you can see these ones are rapid fire paddles. And then these ones shift to different layers. These three actually shift to different, four actually. Um, I just changed that the other day. And then my buttons are mapped to keyboard functions. So I can also, um, I can also play the, uh, I can also play the game on a keyboard if I really want to. Um, some of the stuff is just turned off so I don't accidentally press it and make errors. But then here, this is the button I press when I reset. Um, but looks like basically my right hand controls A, B, start and select. That's what these buttons are. I can show that to you. Shows uh, these this, this hand controls uh, A, B, start and select. This is the same hand so that it's always doing those functions. And then movement is controlled by this hand. So it's like hand independent and we kind of like, like I jump back and forth depending on the state. If I'm in the overworld, I'm using this hand. If I'm in the battle, I'm using this hand. That way, uh, both of my hands are not getting tired out. They get breaks, that sort of thing, so that I can uh, sustain myself through long play sessions. Like if I'm going to sit down and do a versus video, I'm going to be playing in two days. I'm going to play like, I don't know, somewhere between like 10 and 20 hours of of runs it'll probably be three or four days at that point but like that's a lot of play so i need to make sure my hands are going to stay um going to stay uh fresh that is really not the best word for it but yeah um so this key is the reset key which is numpad seven i am pretty sure numpad seven is not being utilized with key hook anywhere Keyhook is a software that allows me to access this JavaScript thing with my keyboard when it's minimized, that sort of thing, so that I can input shortcuts to it. Yeah, so there's nothing. So like F23 is, I guess, the other option that we could be looking for. Like, is there anything in here that will press F23? This does not press F23. Do any of these press F23? This should press F23, yeah. But we expect that. That's on the same button. <laughs> That's on the same button, which is dangerous. That's very dangerous to map something you don't want to press onto the same button. Now, I do need to press a modifier key to get there. But the modifier key, what is the modifier key? The modifier key is this key. And I believe there's a delay to this mapping. There should be a delay. Delay before jump, half a second. So I shouldn't be able to accidentally press that. I should not be able to accidentally press that. Let's just confirm that that's working. It is working. Okay, so we have more than, we have like a half a second before it jumps to that configuration for the controller. So I don't think I pressed this in error. 
it's much more likely that the function that is running new, it's called the new run function, the new run function is likely making an error. Formatted time. Yep, so it's so whenever new run gets pressed, we reset. I will show you what I mean. So here is my software. If I want to restart the timer, I have this new run, I'm not, you can't see my mouse when I'm in the software. It's a, if I press the new run button, I'm gonna enable it so that you can see my mouse. I have to turn that off after though, or we're gonna get wild cursors in my videos. Okay, here's my cursor. So out here, new run, press new run, watch what happens. Resets the timer, resets this, resets the number of resets that are tracked here. Good. Um, this is showing attempts and stuff, this an error, it should be one. Uh, then finishes are one. Finishes increments when you beat red, attempts increment when you start the game. Obviously I can select all of this kind of stuff, these different things, yeah. So set stuff off how I want. Again, like uh, style things, like saturation of the Pokemon, that sort of thing. Just so that I can build this overlay whenever I want with any Pokemon. But it's selected from this dropdown. So when I press new run, it runs that function that I was just showing in Visual Studio Code. It runs this function which sets a bunch of stuff. Are we reading this somewhere? What is my player name right now? So it's Scott. All right, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go back to the game. This is why I generally don't stream this stuff because it takes me so long to show you exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so we'll exit out of this. Stop recording. Okay, here I delete my save file. What happens to my name when I delete my save file? Name just is null. Okay, name is null right now. But then if I start the game, I should have a player ID assigned to me. I'm gonna show you game hook so you can see how this these things are changing in real time. Uh, it's a black screen, just a second. I'm gonna put it under the game window and then show it to you. Okay, here we go. Ta-da! Okay, so on the right hand or left hand side of the screen, um, you can see game hook. These are values that are like being pulled from the game in real time. So at the top you can see player ID and the name and gender male, team count zero. So when I press new game, um, what it should do is it should set my player ID. So you see that? I pressed new game and it assigned me a player ID, but it has not yet assigned me a name. Now if I choose girl here, it will assign the gender, female, and then uh, here it'll assign other stuff later on. But we'll just go to the point where I name myself. Okay. I'm gonna go outside into the overworld, then we're gonna save. And to see what happens to these variables. You may not catch it all because my frame rate is only 60 and uh, there's a lot more frames being rendered by the emulator, 238 a second. So if I reset now, what happens? We go to zero and then the name goes to null, gender back to male. So everything resets to the values it was before we started. But if you if you were really watching closely, the player ID, I think, jumped to 999, like a huge 99999 number. And I think the name did as well. For like two frames. Okay, if I... So when I press A now on the like Suicune screen, um, it will load my save data. Even if you don't press continue, it still loads the save data. So you'll notice that here when I press A, that, oh, it didn't load my save data. Maybe it only does it in Gen 2 when you press continue. In Gen 1, it loads your save data at this screen. Okay, so it loads it right there. 
I back out, does it? No, it doesn't. It just keeps it loaded. The timer didn't reset. <laughs> Timer's still going. Ah! Did I accidentally press new game? Did I accidentally push down and press new game, which reset the timer? I'm starting to think that's what happened. And it wasn't a software bug. Software was performing admirably. It was doing exactly what it needed to do. Let's find out. We can, okay, so like in Super Shucky, the emulator, we can load a replay. Oh, this is super fun. Um, so here, I have loaded the replay that I just played of Lantern. Um, while we watch it play the game for me, we can also notice here that it has restarted the timer when I press new game to start this run. And everything will be assigned as it was in the game because the RNG is deterministic at this point. So yeah, it'll recreate exactly what I did in the game and the timer will run from the point at which it started until the end and then it will stop. That is uh, at least what should happen unless, unless I press new game. If I pressed new game, then we will see the inputs being incorrect. So uh, please everyone, if you have visual problems watching things that move really fast and disorienting, please look away. I will tell you when it is safe again because I am going to scrub through this replay jumping from save state to save state. It takes like a save state every like second or something. So we can go very quickly through the entire playthrough. Um, and the overlay is going to try and keep up with this, but it's not going to be able to. Oh, we're probably getting a ton of Windows sounds. I apologize. My router is still trying to record, which it shouldn't be. Stop recording. I have to exit all the error messages. I only saw them when they poked out from behind all my other windows. <laughs> So, okay, we stopped it. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's go. So we're just gonna zoom through all this. We'll get right back to the same moment and then we'll see what happens. Uh, Snowy at some point is going to add a little scroll bar for us in this, and I, I hope that that is going to happen sooner rather than later. So that then we can just click once on the timeline and it'll take us exactly where we want to go in the replay. That's like the biggest quality of life thing right now. I would be so happy if I got that. <laughs> like... It makes these replays a lot more functional because this is not particularly useful if I want to go and check damage ranges or something. It's like, if I have to do this for like 10 fights, I waste so much time. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I am also going to take my speed settings and I'm going to go to 100% speed. So this is 1x game speed, but it's replaying exactly my inputs. Uh, it will be deterministic again, even though I have changed the game speed because it... Um, the rate at which it is rendering and playing back frames is completely unrelated to what the inputs I made per frame are. Um, those inputs stay locked in depending on the frame that I'm at no matter what. We're just going to jump a tiny bit ahead because it's one I lose for the first time. Like here. Well, let's look. La, 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 let's watch from here. Okay. If the error is my software the timer. If the error is my play, I'll press new game and that will reset the timer. If the error is my software, I won't press new game and on the continue screen when I press continue game, the timer will reset. Also, how does anyone play at one time speed? This is the most painful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> These health bars. What? Oh, you see, it doesn't appear that I'm doing anything currently. Right now, I'm taking like literally half a second to think about what I'm about to do. And that for us translates into a major delay. 
This is why I always say that you can't really build like an equivalency between four times speed and one times speed. You can't just like multiply the time by four and go like, oh, that's what you would get. Like, no, it doesn't work because there's input delay because your brain is always running at a constant speed. Okay, what happens? I'm gonna reset. Reset. Timer's still going. Press continue game and it keeps going. Okay, maybe I was able to move onto that other hotkey layer and accidentally press the wrong button that restarted the timer at the same time. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah, four times game speed and four times brain speed. That's what you really need. Then it would be accurate. So new game, yeah, new game has been debunked. That's not what it was. Save here. Player ID and my name has not been changed. Is this gonna be one of those bugs that happens once and then we can never recreate it? But it happened earlier, didn't it? It happened earlier, yeah. Does it reset here the second time? I'm just watching, I like, wanna watch this fight. I turned the speed back up, if you didn't notice. It's reset here. That's oh, fine. No, it's not a, it wouldn't be a slip, so like, it shouldn't be a slip of the thumb because all this stuff is automated. Like, I'm not starting the timer manually. Just like when the timer starts and stops depending on what's happening in the game. Okay, so like, maybe it is the hotkey, so I, I'll just take that, I'll take that function off of that key for now, and then hopefully that'll uh, clear things up. I'm just gonna put it, I don't know if I can put it on that. It's gonna, it's probably gonna yell at me if I put it on that. This, this button, this button doesn't like to have anything programmed to it. <laughs> really doesn't like you having anything. This. Oh yeah, that's my pause on pause button. But doesn't that function on the base layer? I think it does. This is my start something. Start recording. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna put it over here. This is F23, right? Okay, we're putting F23 over here. You know, we're gonna put F23, we're gonna give it like a rumble, little rumble, tiny rumble. And then we're also gonna give it a delay if we can. Can we delay it? No, we're gonna make a combo then. We're gonna go, wait, 500 milliseconds. I don't know if we can like stop it. I don't think we can stop it. Maybe we won't do that. I'll just put it on F23. I'm not going to get to this layer and accidentally push that button. I very rarely push that button. Sure, we'll have a rumble with it. Then I'll know if I accidentally push it. My fault. Okay. Okay, let's see if now... So one other thing I can do is I can stop the replay. Then I can take over. Oops. <laughs> Take over and make a mistake. This is the most Scott thing that has ever happened. Okay, so now we're, we're gonna, I'll do the reset here manually. See if it works. Yeah, timer is functioning correctly. Now I'm gonna go to that other software layer. And I'm gonna press the button that I used to press to reset. It should just reset the ROM. Yeah, that's intentional. Okay, now I'm gonna press the button and I'm gonna press the new reset button. Okay, that does the timer, all right. I think it must have been that somehow 
I was on the other layer. And it seems to me that with the functionalities of these like stacked layers, because you can have like four layers of controls, like you can have different things programmed to these layers and then shift between them by like pressing other keys or toggles, that kind of thing. Um, I think what it was is that like the F23 and the reset was like, it was stacked. So like both this functionality and the first layer functionality were executing at the same time somehow. Um, that's like the only theory that I have. Or I held this button down slightly and during that time I switched between the layers and that like caused the error. So if we just keep this as only reset and then uh, this button over here um, as always restart. Uh, see it's pause and then it's restart. That's not good. We don't want that. We don't want it to be pause and, and restart. We want to get this off of there. I think I'm going to put it on a keyboard button and never touch that keyboard button. Because I don't touch my keyboard while I'm playing. Mm. Let's try and put it on the center button. Let's try and put it on the center button and see if it hates us. If it opens like the Microsoft like experience thing or whatever, then I'll know I can't do it. Don't want to rumble. Turn the rumble off. All right, let's see if this does it. Okay, so now. Ha, <laughs> it opens Steam. That's funny. Ah, I hate this button. <laughs> Can we mute the default behavior, please? Where is the mute default behavior? Mute the native behavior. Yeah, please. <laughs> I don't want you to... Okay, that appears to be working. So unpause. If we unpause the timer, it pauses the emulator. That's correct. It should also... Yeah, so then unpause the emulator. Timer's running. Now if we press this button, it'll pause the emulator and the timer. I cannot input anything into the emulator, so it is correctly paused. If I unpause, it will unpause both things together. This is functioning correctly. If I move to the other software layer and I press this button, it is successfully still pausing and unpausing. And now if I go there and press the central button, it resets the timer. Okay, let's make sure that it resets the resets as well. And now we are gonna try and reset. Reset correct. Okay, I think we have corrected it. I think it is working now. I think we found a kind of annoying problem, but at least it's resolved. I uh, hope this has been interesting. Uh, uh, insight, maybe, is some insight into uh, what my process is like behind the scenes and what I, how I set things up. These bugs have been really annoying to deal with, but I'm hopefully they're all going to be resolved sometime in the near future. Uh, I think Lantern is going to have to get re-ranked later. I don't have it in me to do another another playthrough. It, my voice is like pretty tired. Um, I got sick at the beginning of the week, and then when like my nose starts running and that kind of thing, it. it I burn out my voice faster when I'm talking. Yeah. So. I'm going to leave things here today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, if you like the, if you like the coding stream, put it in the, uh, put it in the comments so that I know. Also, if you liked this Flareon playthrough, let me know about it in the comments section as well. If you made it this far, you're incredible. Thanks so much. Electrode vs. Magneton is coming out this week. Uh, so next Saturday, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. There will be a bonus re-ranking video in Pokemon Yellow before then. It's going to feature a whole bunch of different Pokemon, like the Evolutions, Pidgeot, Farfetch'd, and even Victory Bell. So I think it's going to be fun. Uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be Monday or Tuesday. And then back to regular releases, hopefully on Saturday for the rest of the year. I apologize for missing this one. Thanks for understanding. If you made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.